Have you ever wondered why a staggering 82% of Mexico appears to be empty, almost devoid of human settlement? Picture a country, a place bursting with vibrant cultures, a rich tapestry of history, and a natural landscape that's as diverse as it is breathtaking. This is Mexico, a land of contrasts, a land of wonders, a land that despite its many appeals, seems to have a vast expanse that remains largely uninhabited. Consider the sheer size of Mexico, it's the third largest country in Latin America and the 14th largest in the world. Yet, a considerable 82% of this expansive land appears to be empty. It's as if a giant invisible hand has swept across the landscape and left it untouched, pristine, and almost devoid of human settlement. This is a land of high mountains and deep valleys, of dense forests and barren deserts, of bustling cities and quiet villages. It's a land where the ancient and the modern coexist, where the past and the present intertwine in a dance as old as time itself. Yet, Despite this rich tapestry of natural and cultural diversity, a large portion of Mexico remains uninhabited. You might be asking why is this the case? The answer as you might expect is complex and multifaceted. It's a story that spans centuries, a story that involves history, geography, culture, and much more. In the heart of this paradox lies a fascinating tale, a tale of human ingenuity and adaptation, of struggle and survival, of conquest and resistance. It's a tale that reveals much about the nature of human settlement, about how we choose to inhabit and transform the spaces in which we live. So sit back, relax, and prepare to embark on an intriguing journey. A journey that will take us across the vast and varied landscape of Mexico. A journey that will reveal the hidden forces and factors that have shaped this unique pattern of population distribution. As we delve deeper you'll discover the intriguing factors that led to this unique population distribution. To understand the issue we need to travel back in time, back to Mexico's early history. In the beginning what we now know as Mexico was home to a variety of indigenous civilizations among which the Aztecs and Mayas were prominent. These civilizations were a testament to human ingenuity and adaptation, carving out their existence in a landscape that was as diverse as it was challenging. The Aztecs, known for their architectural prowess and complex societal structures, established their capital, Tenochtitlan, in the heart of a valley. Surrounded by mountains, this fertile valley provided the Aztecs with the resources they needed to flourish. The Mayas, on the other hand, were more coastal dwellers, establishing their cities along the Yucatan Peninsula. They thrived in these areas, developing advanced systems of writing, mathematics, and astronomy. But what about the rest of Mexico? Well, it was largely left untouched. The high, arid plateaus, the deep, dense jungles and the vast, hot deserts did not offer the same opportunities as the fertile valleys and coastal areas. These harsh landscapes were challenging to inhabit and cultivate, and as a result, were largely left uninhabited. Interestingly, this pattern of settlement was not unique to Mexico. It was, and still is, a common phenomenon observed across the globe. Human beings, by nature, gravitate towards areas that offer the best chances of survival and prosperity. Whether it's the fertile valleys of the Nile, the Indus, or the Yangtze, or the coastal areas around the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, or the Pacific, we see this pattern repeated. So this pattern of settlement we observe in Mexico, with a concentration of populations in the fertile valleys and coastal areas, and a vast emptiness in the harsher landscapes, is not an anomaly. It's a testament to human adaptation and survival. The remnants of these civilizations show a pattern that echoes in today's population distribution. This pattern, rooted in the past, continues to shape Mexico's present, painting a historical canvas that helps us understand why 82% of Mexico remains uninhabited. The arrival of Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century marked a significant shift in Mexico's population dynamics. As explorers from Spain set foot on the shores of Mexico, the landscape and destiny of the region were irrevocably altered. These conquistadors, driven by a thirst for gold and glory, began the process of colonization, a series of events that would redefine the country's demographic blueprint. The conquistadors, led by the indomitable Hernán Cortés, toppled the mighty Aztec Empire and claimed the land for Spain. This conquest was not merely a military victory, it was a cultural and societal transformation. The Spanish established new settlements and cities, replacing the indigenous structures with their own, but here's the catch. These new cities weren't sprinkled evenly across the land. Instead, they were strategically placed in areas that were easy to govern and exploit. 
the conquistadors were not just conquerors, they were opportunists. They chose locations close to resources like gold and silver, fertile land for agriculture and accessible routes for trade. This approach left vast swaths of the country, particularly the harsher terrains, untouched by the wave of colonization. Mountainous regions, dense forests and arid desert zones were largely left to their own devices. The Spanish, for all their pioneering spirit, were not keen on settling in areas that presented significant challenges. This selective colonization had a lasting impact on Mexico's population spread. Even today, the regions that were favored by the conquistadors are the most densely populated areas of the country. Cities like Mexico City, Veracruz, and Guadalajara, all established during the Spanish rule, are prime examples. On the other hand, the areas that were overlooked by the Spanish remain sparsely populated. These challenging terrains, despite their natural beauty and resources, are home to a mere fraction of Mexico's total population. The legacy of the Spanish conquest is still visible in Mexico's current population layout. These areas, once ignored by the conquistadors, now make up the vast, beautiful yet largely empty lands that cover 82% of Mexico. Geography has always been a significant player in the settlement puzzle. Mexico's geographical diversity is a prime example of this. It's a country that's as diverse as it is vast, with landscapes ranging from arid deserts to lush jungles and towering mountains. But this diversity also presents a host of challenges when it comes to human settlement. Let's start with the mountains. Mexico is home to the Sierra Madre Oriental and Sierra Madre Occidental ranges which run parallel to each other, essentially forming a natural barrier. These mountain ranges not only make transportation and communication difficult, but also pose significant challenges for agriculture. The rugged terrain is not conducive to large-scale farming and the high altitude can make living conditions harsh. Next, we have the deserts. The Sonoran and Chihuahuan deserts, among others, cover a significant portion of Mexico. These areas are characterized by extreme temperatures, scarce water sources, and a lack of fertile soil. It's no wonder that these vast expanses remain largely uninhabited. And then there are the jungles. The Lacandon jungle in the south and the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula are teeming with biodiversity. While this might seem like an ecological paradise, it's a different story when it comes to human habitation. The dense vegetation, coupled with high humidity and a host of tropical diseases, make these jungles inhospitable. These geographical constraints have shaped the way people have settled in Mexico. The majority of the population tends to cluster in areas that are more geographically favorable, like the central Mexican plateau. This area offers a more temperate climate, fertile soil, and relatively flat terrain making it more suitable for agriculture and human settlement. In conclusion, the geographical challenges posed by mountains, deserts, and jungles in Mexico have played a significant role in its sparse population distribution. These areas are hard to live in and cultivate, leading to a concentration of population in more hospitable regions. The challenging terrain of Mexico has been a key factor in shaping its population distribution. In recent times, other factors have come into play, further accentuating the population distribution. One of the most significant of these is industrialization. As Mexico modernized, industries sprung up primarily in cities, leading to an increased demand for labor. This in turn spurred urbanization, with people moving from rural areas to cities in search of better job opportunities and higher standards of living. Additionally, economic policies have played a pivotal role. Government initiatives often focus on developing urban areas, inadvertently widening the gap between cities and rural regions. Infrastructure, healthcare, and educational facilities are predominantly concentrated in city areas, making them more attractive to the populace. Interestingly, the lure of the cities has left the countryside even more deserted, exacerbating the issue of an empty Mexico. As we move forward, these trends are likely to continue, further deepening the population disparity. So, what have we learned about the 82% of Mexico that remains unpeopled? We've journeyed through time, tracing back to the historical canvas where the conquistadors played a significant role in shaping Mexico's population distribution. Their settlements, largely driven by the pursuit of precious metals, were concentrated in certain regions, leaving vast expanses of the country uninhabited. Then, we navigated through the geographical constraints that have also influenced where people live. The rugged mountains, arid deserts, and dense jungles have all made parts of Mexico less hospitable for human settlement. Finally, we touched upon the modern influences. Urbanization and industrialization have intensified the concentration of populations in cities, 
further emphasizing the emptiness in other parts of the country. All these factors have intricately woven together to create the Mexico we know today. While these factors have created a diverse and unique country, they also pose challenges for Mexico's future development. So the question remains, how will Mexico navigate this path forward? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.